Our break and go into our study. Um, it's just a short one. Uh, I saw that expression back there. I, I just have to go get some. We didn't have no power here about an hour ago, so we didn't connect everything up. Now I gotta just go get it so I can connect it. But are there any other special prayer requests uh, before we close out prayer service? All right. Mm -hmm. Yes, pray for my family. Pray for your family. Okay. You certainly will. You certainly will. Yeah. Okay. Let's pray together. All lives and all merciful Father, who dwells in heaven, thank you for the privilege of prayer, for the opportunity to talk to you. Know that you will hear us because you are our Father. We are your children. We realize that Jesus said when he walked this earth that if we ask anything of you in his name that you would do it. And all of the prayers that have already been lifted and even this prayer is not lifted in any one of our names but in his name. And Father, we honor Sister Sharon's prayer request. We covenant with her in prayer. Lift her your presence as well as to invite your family. You know what they stand in need of on, on this evening. In fact, you know what all of us stand in need of on this evening. Would you bless her to sense your presence and wrap your loving arms around her? Strengthen her where she may feel weak and build her up where she may feel torn down. And Father, would you bless us as we prepare to just continue our study of your word? We have it the right. May we study always to show ourselves a true country. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It won't take you a whole five minutes. <laughs> Would anyone want bottled water? Bottled water. Bottled water. Yeah. You want, yeah. You want one? Yes. I'm saying yes, thank you. Okay. You want one? Sure. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, uh, I'm trying to figure out what it is. Because I, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. I'm going to get a little arrow with the mouse too, though, you know? No, 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 no. Oh. Not, the, not the little arrow. But... Oh, but okay, that was about right. That's about right. I think it is a person kind of climbing around. Oh. oh more, more in the middle, right above the... Um, the opening, mm -hmm. yeah, it is. What's wrong? You talk about that. Isn't that a person climbing that mountain? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Wow, that's me in my dreams. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> notice I said in my dreams, I think in real life, me in my dreams. That's broke mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, okay. You had a good trip. Okay. Right. Okay, we are on lesson three, and we are going to finish out lesson three. I want to do a quick review from the beginning of, of the lesson and would love any comments, any input from, from all of you uh, about what you remember from last week or what still stands out to you. Uh, as we studied the lesson last week, and of course it, it received one another. And Romans 15, 7 says, therefore receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God, the King James Version. So we are to receive one another how? That's why I as Christ received us. And really, just like everything else we do in our lives, our purpose for receiving one another is to be to whose glory? God. God. It is to be to God's glory. And nothing could be more world-changing than the impact that the kingdom of God has on our earthly relationships. And we read that and we talked about that. And the kingdom of God, again, is the reign of God. God rules over this universe. And within the universe, everyone does not submit themselves to God's rule. But within the greater universe of God's creation, there is a kingdom within that kingdom known as the church, where we submit ourselves to the sovereignty of God. Again, we talked last week about the fact that the world is in dire need of an example of God living in a community. Did you have a chance to think about any of those things over the past week? Any other thoughts jump out at you or stood out with you about this idea of living in community? No? Okay. Oh, it did, but I just can't think at the moment. Okay, you just can't think for the moment. <laughs> okay. That, that's what the world needs, right? Okay. I don't know why I'm doing a lot of time, so I guess it's all over me. But it, oh, it jumped out, but really, I guess, pricked my heart was about me and what part I play in the community, what I'm doing in the Okay, if you all didn't hear, she said what pricked her heart was about herself and what she what part she played in that community and and 
And that's really important in, in, the, in the day and age that we live in right now. People just don't know what it means to live in community. I remember when I was growing up uh, that if you lived in a particular neighborhood, all the parents could punish or chest time. Mm -hmm. All of the kids, yeah. you know, there was no like, uh, you better leave my kid alone. And matter of fact, most parents said, you know, if you see them doing something, you get them, and then I'm gonna get them when they get home because you yeah. have to get them. Yeah, uh, that was that was community. In a good sense, also we celebrated in our neighborhoods things that happened to, to other families, good things that happened. Even now, usually if you see a, a street that has a whole lot of cars on it that doesn't normally have it or they're normally not parking there, it's usually because someone has suffered some kind of catastrophe mm -hmm. and people have come in to support them and to encourage them. Well, that's the way it, it ought to be, be in, in the congregation. Uh, the elders and I received a message on yesterday of a family that was in need and wonder could we get together and pray for him maybe this coming Sunday. I'm not waiting till Sunday to contract with this family. I had called them, talked with them, prayed with them, and those of us who can make it are going to drive out to their house tomorrow. I'm not, we might not be living Sunday. That's right. You know, ministry is not always convenient. Another brother had another issue come up in his life. He didn't want to go to this place by himself. Hey, I'll go with you if you really need somebody to be with you. Mm -hmm. We had to uh, we had to sit and wait a long time. You know how it is sometimes when you go to court. He didn't do anything wrong because they wanted him to witness something that happened to him. But we just spent time together talking. I got to know him a little bit more. I didn't know some of the stuff that uh, he was willing to share with me and he thanked that I, I didn't do much as a matter of fact i didn't do anything i paid for a two dollar parking ticket but you know what's that mm -hmm. the parking the little parking lot but i took some time and, and got up a little earlier and met him here at the building and we went together but it was just a wonderful fellowship a kind of this community feeling that we uh and of course, he let everybody know who came by. This is my minister. This is my minister. This is my minister. We used to do that kind of stuff in the Lord's Church. Does that um, I, I think because things have changed so much and people are, are a lot different, you, you don't remember all the time the things, how things used to be. And then you're kind of scared to even venture out because people are so... So stand off and so you don't know what's going to happen anymore. I think that's what's happening because I I can I can I can relate and understand how you know if you you'd like to ask somebody to do something but you're afraid to anymore because you don't uh, no one you don't know who to trust anymore. Even in the church. Yeah, even in the church. Even in the church. Wow. That shows that we need to return. Mm -hmm. to our first love. Yep. Because this is the one place that should be the sanctuary. You should be able to... There should be a sanctuary. But if you have to be confronted by, I won't say you confront, but if you have to be confronted by the same stuff in the church that's in the world, where else are you going to go? Nowhere else you go. The world needs... An example of God is living in a community, and the entire brotherhood really needs mm -hmm. a, a godly example. Uh, the Greek term proslambano, translated as receive, means to take to oneself. And again, it has this meaning of uh, friendship or hospitality. To admit to that means you know, you get a ticket to uh, be admitted into some kind of event. It's actually saying we need to open up our hearts and let people in. Mm. That's what okay. Kathy was saying. If you take a rest now when you do that. Yeah. I, you know, I, I have a just 
because of the way I was raised, you respect your elders. It don't matter that you're not my real mother biologically. You're my mother. When I come in here and older, I'm older. So when there's a woman who's older than me, I, I, that's my mom. That's my spiritual mom. Automatically. I don't, I don't have to know your lineage and all that. You're, and, and so to be told, no, you can't call her spiritual mom, not by that person, but by someone else. I mean, it, it makes it kind of a tenuous situation. It makes it hard. It does. It makes it hard. <laughs> but one thing I do want to remind us, it is always involved grace. Even when we used to do it years ago, because there was always the risk of being rejected, even then. But not as hard as people are. are people, have right, people are not as hard or as <laughs> more risk now. But I'm just simply saying, anytime you open up yourself to anybody, it's always going to make you vulnerable to being hurt. Brother Nathan and Sister Shirley. <clears throat> Oh, it's so difficult uh, today because of uh, the society that we live in. Uh, because if we look at it, the closer we have come to living together in our society, actually, the farther apart. Wow. Yes, sir. Yeah. The closer we have come to living together in our society, the further apart emotionally and spiritually. Spiritually, uh, emotionally. Wow. Spiritually. Yeah. That's something to think about. Especially now with this technology. Sister Sharad. Three things. One is, it really is crazy because we are really willing to take risks on people outside of the church. Wow. And not to take risks on each other inside of the church. Then also, uh, we also have to create a safe space for people and to be approachable and also not to assume a lot of person before you even get to know that person. Mm -hmm. well, but then also, the third point is. Well, we got three. You gave us three, so we got two. What was the first? I said, you got to create a safe place. And then the first, the other one was. You can't, you can't assume. Can't assume. Oh, I was just. You said, and you said we do it with people outside of the church instead of. Well, it was 40. I got, I got a <laughs> <laughs> but those were great. I mean, unfortunately, She's right. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, she's right. To admit to friendship, open it up. That's what that, that means, to admit that I'm going to open up myself so you can be my friend and I can be your friend. Yeah, but by opening up a lot and getting rejected and hurt, that makes you... Mm, that makes you close that back off. Yep. I don't want to do that you anymore. Might. Again, that's really one of the... <laughs> The risk of being a child of God. Think about Peter. When he asked the Lord, how many times can my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Seven times? Peter thought he, he was saying something. <laughs> Seven, the Lord, I, I'm a, man, I'm really spiritual. Seven times. The Lord said, no, not seven times. <laughs> Seventy times seven. 490 times. Jesus reminded his disciples over and over again when they asked him questions like that. If your brother sin against you and they repent, you forgive him. And there is no, and I know some Christians might say, okay, 70 times 7 is 490, and I'm at 489. You got one left. <laughs> That's not what Jesus meant at all, right? are so busy. There's a lot of us that are too faced in church. 
we put on the front when we come in church, mm -hmm. and we're not really that person that we portray to be in church. And a lot of times, the the, the person that we are outside the church comes <laughs> inside the church. Oh, <laughs> you mean hypocrites from the church? <laughs> Mm. And that's true. We're not a sinner. And all of that is, is, is valid, to be honest. There, there is a such thing as, as church hurt. But I ran across something today uh, as I was reading after class, and I, I saw this on somebody's Facebook post. There was a brother in the church, and, said, and it said, that we will go to McDonald's and it doesn't matter how many times they mess up our order, we'll keep going back. Mm -hmm. Something goes wrong in the church and we immediately want to leave. Mm -hmm. I said, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what all these other places can fail mm -hmm. or have people in them that fail. And if it's where we really want to go, we'll, we'll go back. We might not even go to that McDonald's. We can go find another. Because mm -hmm. we still want McDonald's. Or for me, oh, that, that Popeye's might not do right. But I'm going to go find me another Popeye. <laughs> but when it comes to the church, then it, this really goes back to that community thing. When it comes to the church, we're readily run away from the church and blame everybody else because everybody wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. right? And that's, so, that's why I say it's a tenuous situation because we're all at different, um, on this journey that we're on, on this spiritual journey, we all at different parts of our journey. And, and even being rejected, doesn't mean that I'm going to let that stop me. Okay. I, I mean, I'm, I was 55 in the middle, I told. And, and, and in that amount of time, I've run across inside and outside the church where people have been disrespectful. Or, but that doesn't stop me from still respecting my elders because an elder was disrespectful or the child of an elder was disrespectful. That, that's not going to change me on my journey. That's part of my journey. Okay. Just learning how to deal with those types of Learn how to deal And she just reminded me of another thing I read earlier today that says, just because everybody else quits on you, just make sure you don't quit on you. Hmm. Hmm. Admit to friendship, hospitality. Critical command, Paul issued a command intended to promote harmony. To promote harmony. What does that word promote mean? Encourage. Encourage. Promote, encourage, uh, or as the Hebrew writer, you know, exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching, exhort to encourage. We need to promote harmony within the a local congregation. As a matter of fact, the majority of the New Testament books were written to local churches. We often want to apply them to the universal church and the brotherhood, but if it's not working in here, it it won't reach out either. They need to accept one another. They would have reached across racial, cultural, social working, welcome one another in the loving of God. Welcoming one another in the loving of God. What a powerful way to develop a more harmonious union among such a diverse community. What a relative word for churches today. If Satan continues to use our lack of mutual acceptance as a wedge between the church and the world, not only does he use it as a wedge between the church and the world, he will use it within churches, within a local congregation. It's always difficult to identify a command of the Lord's as critical, for all the Lord's commands are critical. Commands should never be seen as steps by which we can earn heaven. 
God desires a love response to the gifts he has already given. Even though there are many people in the church who believe that what we do earns our way to heaven, many of us aren't going to make it if that's our criteria. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many rules do you have to make sure you keep? Hmm. But everything we do, everything we do ought to be done because of the love we have for God and what God has already done for us. I don't come here to worship on Sunday in order to go to heaven. I come here to worship on Sunday because I'm on my way to heaven. Okay. I don't come here to worship with the saints on Sunday in order to be a Christian. I come here to worship because I am a, a Christian. And that's how we really need to, when we start looking at the things we do that way, a lot of things that have tripped us up and caused people to lose faith in God and even walk away from the church, it won't affect them because I'm not doing it to earn my way, nor am I doing it to please you. I'm doing it because God expects it of me, and I'm thankful for what he's done for me. Any thoughts before we, we move on? We really have to set the example for our youth. Okay. You know, going, going to all the activities. I try to make the, the track meets and the concerts and things like and things like that. Encourage them because they're not getting encouraged out on the street. And then Brother Franklin brought up a great point. That's where Christianity meets. The rubber meets the road. Not... For, for too many of us, only what we do in this building on Sunday and Wednesday matters. And even sometimes, as Sister Sharice reminded, even that doesn't matter if you get on my last nerve. Mm -hmm. Then I may not even behave. I don't, I don't like to use the word act, but when you act, that means you're pretending. But I might not behave like a Christian in this building if you push the wrong button. And then turn around and justify it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm only human. No, you're not only human. Because the Spirit of God dwells inside of us. Mm -hmm. Before we became Christians, we were only human. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all should see. I can see behind the mask. <laughs> so let's look at the basis of, of, of the command. I think we're on page 21. Mm -hmm. The basis of the command. The command to receive or accept one another is grounded in what God has already done for us in Christ. Romans 15, 7. We come to Christ just as we are. We bring the baggage of our upbringing, our words, our deeds, and our experiences. We come with our hurts and pains, as well as our sense of self. Now, before Brother Frank continues to read, you do know that everybody who's a member of the Lord's Church brought the baggage with them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely so. And unfortunately, some of them unpack it while they're here. Mm -hmm. I never thought about that until just now. <laughs> Did they unpack that baggage? And sometimes we don't know how to deal with it. That help them deal with it. Because of that, everybody in the church, and Sister McLean just mentioned it, we're at different spots on this journey. Hello. I may mention earlier today, Sometimes we are impatient with, with people who come into the church out of denominational. So they'll use words or they will do things that we don't use and we don't say. And I have seen whole Bible classes get tore up over the fact that somebody said something about joining the church. Exactly. You can't join the church. And First of all, you can't join the universal church, 
but you join a local congregation. As a matter of fact, the book of Acts said that because of what the people saw, they were afraid to join themselves to the disciples. When I came here as your minister, what did I do? <laughs> I mean, you should see the way they're looking at me. I'm just waiting on the answer. <laughs> I joined myself to this congregation. When the leadership at the time asked me to come be the interim minister, I joined myself to this local congregation, which meant I identified that for the time being, this is where my membership is. When Sister McClain said, I do, and I jumped sky high, and we both moved here, we joined this congregation. But you know what? See, this is all a point of teaching. See, if, if people are taught or explained certain things, then they can understand. So once you, you have to look at it. If somebody's been taught a certain way, and they and they only understand this until someone brings it to out to them saying, look, this that's not what that means for me. You can't take it like that. You have to understand it has a, a much broader but well, that's why I'm teaching, Kathy. Yes, yes. I'm, yes. I'm teaching. <laughs> I'm teaching. <laughs> but we can get focused on uh so many things that are contrary. And he's going to talk about it later in the chapter. Our personal opinions and your you know, desires or what have you, we make them law and we bind them on each other. And so then we will even tear off a local congregation because you didn't do things the way I prefer it to be done. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. But everybody in here has brought their. their, their their backs, their past, their experience. Some of it needs to be un unlearned. Mm -hmm. But then some of the stuff we bring into the church, we need to keep because the Lord wants to use it right. for yeah. his glory. Yeah. Talents. Yeah. Talents, yeah. skills. Yeah. Even experiences, as long as we learn from them. Right. You know, the old people used to say when I was growing up, when you learn better, you do better. Do better. Yeah. Okay. Like Mr. McClain was saying, we were all at different levels. And it's like when certain things click, it clicks. And just like when I, when I came to university, it was rough because it was a rough crowd. <laughs> it was a rough crowd. And so when somebody in the denominational world told me, who do you serve? And that's when it clicked. It said like, who do I serve? And that made me do better. In other words, stop worrying about the rough ride. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and, and that makes sense. That makes sense. Yes. Then, uh, so people bring all this stuff in here. And I like the next part of the paragraph, Brother Frank. Our Lord did not make us sit in an interview and answer questions to determine whether or not we are acceptable to Him. He simply told us of the Father's love for us the Son's willingness to die in our stead, and the Spirit's willingness to dwell within us. What a wonderful experience salvation is. What a wonderful experience salvation is. What greater way to what? What greater way we can honor the Lord than by opening our hearts to accept one another without Humanly, state, what is that? Reservation. Dictated. Dictated reservations. And without humanly dictated reservations. reservations. It took sacrifice. Before Brother Frank was reading, Sister McLean and I, we have certain shows we watch on Monday night. And then we have certain shows we watch on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. We love our FBI's on Tuesday mm -hmm. night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All three of them in a row. FBI. And FBI International and FBI Most Wanted. On FBI Most Wanted last night, a girl went missing. Her mother contacted the police. 
And the officer said he followed standard operating procedure. And then they quit looking for her. She said she'd also called the FBI, but the FBI didn't put in no extra effort to try to find her daughter. Three days after that girl was reported missing, another girl was taken. But she happened to be the daughter of a senator. Hmm. So all of a sudden, the police department and the FBI, everybody is young and trying to find this girl. They go to visit the mother of the other girl and ask why or what happened when she called. And the police officer, the initial police officer was with them. And then they told her, well, we think it's the same person. We have a second girl who's missing. And so she gave him effort. Then as they were leaving, she said, who is this second girl? And they told her, well, she's the daughter of the second. The mother was hurt because mm -hmm. you, you made a distinction between mm -hmm. yeah. my daughter and a daughter of the senator. My daughter wasn't worth mm -hmm. the, the effort you're now putting in to find the second girl. They were both abducted by the same person. At the end of the, the show, they found the daughter of the senator first. This guy had bought two toy chests, put them in, uh, he had mama problems. Hmm. That's interesting with mother's day coming out. <laughs> but he had, he had mother problems. Both girls looked like his mother mm -hmm. who abused him. And, and she had put him in a toy chest as a kid mm -hmm. to punish him. So in his cracked mind, he was paying his mother back. Mm -hmm. Uh, his mother was also an addict, and so the first girl that was taken was at a halfway house because she was an addict. The second girl was taken because he found her at the halfway house because she was volunteering. Of course, the senator's daughter was alive. They found, her. Yeah. they found this other toy chest, opened it up, the other girl was dead. Mm -hmm. They had to go tell his mother, mm -hmm. we found your daughter, but she's dead. And her first question was, what about yeah. the senator's mm -hmm. daughter? She's alive. Yep. And she actually invited him out of the house. Mm -hmm. They said, well, we're sorry. We, we, we're sorry about your loss. They said, no, y'all just, just go out. Yeah. You got to get out of my house. Mm -hmm. My daughter could have been alive if you had but then this put, in the the put in the effort. Yep. Why do I... That's the way it's going to always resonate with me because that's how we treat each other in the church. Mm -hmm. Certain people who have certain educational levels will associate with them. But if, if you graduated with, with, with your uh, G okay, your GED. <laughs> your GED. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I can't spend too much time with, with you. I was trying to think of something else. You know, some people graduate with, they say, cum laude, and yeah. some graduate summa cum laude, and then some graduate magna cum laude. I was told well, my son graduated thank the Lord. <laughs> I was just grateful he graduated. <laughs> but even though we're laughing about those distinctions, we lose those distinctions. Yeah, it, it hurts people. That, that does a lot of damage. About who has the clock, yeah. who can make suggestions and they be followed, and who makes suggestions that, well, you know, you don't have no lesson behind your name. Mm -hmm. Or you don't work in this particular. And we do it, we'll even do that with people we're trying to convert. Mm. If you don't present a certain kind of way, then I'm not sure that I'm going to spend my time trying to get you in the church. But we need, I mean, I actually had a preacher say to me, when we lost some members during COVID who were good givers, mm -hmm say to me that I needed to go out and find some people 
of their same socioeconomic level to replace their offering. Oh. Right here. Now, he wasn't the minister here, but he's a minister of the Church of Christ. I won't say no more than that. And I thought to myself, are you serious? I am not going to go in no neighborhood to determine whether or not I want you to hear the gospel because you can make our offering go up. Mm. It, it's not going to happen. I mean, if you obey the gospel, fine, then you're required to give. But that's not going to be the criteria. Let's see. I want to study with them because they look like they got some money mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. Are you serious? Are you that's exactly what he just said. Like the minimally dictated reservation is that humanistic worldly view of gauging things. That's not what Jesus did. Everybody's life was a value. Oh, no. So much so that he died some Gentiles so that we would have a chance. Yeah. He just saw people. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I experienced that on Sunday night with, with James. You all remember James? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He hadn't been here in a while. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he was there. Like, he the was doorbell there. rang. I, opened, I went to open the door and it was James and he had his little card. And I said, oh, James, I am so glad to see you. And I was glad to see you during service when I got up to preach. Those who were here know that I called out everybody's name mm -hmm. that was here, mm -hmm. but I definitely called his name just as much because I was really glad to see him. He is really glad to be here. And yes, <laughs> he was really good. He, he probably saying amen louder than anybody else on, on Sunday, Sunday night. night. But I was glad to see him. But he's a human being mm -hmm. who evidently found something in our midst exactly. yeah. that caused him to want to keep coming back over mm -hmm. and over. And, and now that the pandemic has gone down and we're back in the building, he shows back up. Mm -hmm. We've got to look beyond our, our limitations and restrictions that we put on, on folks. Mm -hmm. Not only in how we win people, but how we interact with each other as members of the congregation. I know I spoke to one brother. I said, hello, brother. I'm Brother Barn. Call me doctor. Call oh, wow. Me doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way some of us are. That these man-made statuses are more important than right. yeah. Our relationship to one another. You do know brother is not a title. Exactly. And you do know sister is not a title. Although sometimes my brethren and my preacher brethren have made, well, if I can't have doctor or yeah, doctor in front of my name and says we don't call her, you you just gotta make sure you call me brother McLean. Give me my respect. Right. I I will give, I'm like Sister McClain, these, these older men. Every now and then I will call Brother Nate, Brother Nate. Not often. If I call, if I call him Brother Nate, it usually will be Brother Nate Wright Senior. You know, the older men, I would probably call them by their last name. And, and the elders, we're pretty close in our working relationship. So we, I would say Brother Frank, Brother Donald, or Brother Greg. Uh, but it's not a title. We, these, you know, these are not titles that that, that we're wearing. That we're all, all cut, cut. You know, when I see my brother Gerald, I don't say, "Hey, brother Jerry, glad to see you, bro." I might say, "Hey, bro." Mine's a little different. It's more uh, on an intimate level, but. These, these man-made restrictions, reservations, man, humanly dictated reservations that you got to measure up to a certain standard. If you're a member of the body of Christ, a child of God, you are somebody. Amen. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything else. It becomes a, you are some, somebody. Mm -hmm. Brother Frank, 
It took sacrifice for God to accept us, and it will take some sacrifice for us to accept one another. If our Lord was willing to go to the cross and make the ultimate sacrifice for us, then our differences, ideologies, and say that right, mm -hmm. and opinions are well worth sacrificing so that we can accept one another. Oh, you mean the idiosyncrasy? Yeah, that's what it is. The idiosyncrasy. Mm -hmm. And opinions. Yeah. So we have to sacrifice to accept one another. Because Jesus sacrificed his life for God to accept us. So let's look, let's look on the next page then, page 22. Dealing with doubtful things. And I want someone to get Romans 14, verse 1 through 6 and wait for me there. But someone start reading with dealing with doubtful things. Paul's instruction was given against the context of cultural and personal preferences that some felt were being violated. Romans 14, 1 through 6. Now, Kathy, I want you to hold there and I want someone to read Romans 14, 1 through 6. And him, that's, him that is weak in the faith, receive you, but not to doubtful disputation. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemed one day above another, another esteemed every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regarded the day regarded it unto the Lord, and he that regarded not the day to the Lord he does not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. All right. And he that eateth that's it. not. That's it, that's it, isn't it? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Keep reading. I'm sorry. To the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Give God thanks. All right. Now, thank you. They had problems with things that shouldn't have been a problem. Okay. Uh, Kathy, as she continues to read, she's going to talk about the Essenes. Anybody who did not get just a little handout from last week about the Essenes for which of that's right, that's right. No. kind of give you a, a, a breakdown, a, a little bit more of a break, breakdown of what they believe than he put in that one paragraph. Oh, the S. All right. <laughs> Go ahead, Sister Kathy. He was likely referring to a class of Jewish Christians with Essenian uh, tendencies. The Essenes were a sect, sect of Jewish Judaism that formed a separate community and lived celibate ascetic lives. They were largely vegetarian and strict Sabbatarians. Mm -hmm. Their religious sensibilities would certainly have been offended within a predominantly Gentile church. So these essays would not have had any fellowship at all with Gentiles. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at what the handout I gave you, they were, uh, they were strictly separatists. Uh, they believe in the laws of Moses and the immortality of the soul. They practiced the Sabbath. They were Seventh-day Adventists before there was anything called a Seventh-day Adventist, okay? Uh, they practiced ritual purifications. They lived separately from society that they viewed as, as corrupted. 
Uh, they had an apocalyptic view about punishment for sins. They believed in the coming Messiah. It is believed that John the Baptist, or some scholars say that they think John the Baptist was out of that community. We don't really know. But the Dead Sea Scrolls came out of this Quamran community uh, that's over there in, in Palestine. So they had, they were very strict about a lot of things. They, they, what they ate, uh, they didn't marry, uh, just a number of different things. So what he is saying is that it sounds like the church in Rome had some of the same kind of problems. Let's look at these doubtful things, Sister Kathy. Doubtful things are issues or practices that are open to opinion and personal preference. These are matters that can cause Christians to choose sides and pass judgments over what or who is right or wrong. The key thing to note is that the issues or practices being debated over are things that the Lord allows individual freedom of choice. These Christians were debating over dietary regulation and the religious observance of certain days of the year. Ethnic beliefs and practices were most likely at the core of, the, of these debates, Romans 14, two to six. Rather than deliberating and questioning over what was true in reference to what ought to be done, and rather than turning such issues into drawing lines of, of fellowship, they were simply to accept each other regardless of the choice made. There are some things that are not salvation issues that we have destroyed local congregations over. Mm -hmm. I shared with the 12 I might have shared it with you all last week. I like to go online and See what kind of sermons I mean, preaching the Church of Christ in various places. So I went to this one, one site because the title of this particular sermon was Why We Don't Fellowship All Churches of Christ. <laughs> okay. So I, I clicked on it, and it was supposed to be a sermon on 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, which, by the way, the, the subject is the Lord's Supper. It's not a church building. Okay. But this person had built a whole sermon on the sinfulness of having a kitchen in the church building <laughs> because Paul said, have you not houses to eat in? <laughs> the whole sermon was on how you can't eat in the church building. Really, that's not the, there were no church buildings in the first century. You all do know that, right? There were no church buildings in the first century, like this building we're sitting in right now. They worshiped in each other's homes. Mm -hmm. okay, there we go. And anywhere else they could get, that's right. But they built, and so they don't fellowship any church of Christ that has a kitchen mm. or fellowship hall <laughs> in their building. Mm. Wow. Now, I haven't seen any of these, those buildings up here. Now, when I preached down south, I saw a few. And they didn't even have a water fountain in the building. If you were in service and you wanted a drink of water, you had to get up, go outside of the church building to the water fountain that was on the front porch of the building because you cannot eat or drink in the building. What are you going to do about communion? <laughs> that's the only thing you can do. Oh. Because that's authorized. We will tear up the Lord's church over our personal preferences. And we'll quote scripture while we're doing it. 
What he says is we need to make sure that we don't let our idiosyncrasies and our opinions cause us to be divided. I mentioned in the 12 known class, one of the biggest arguments that's going on in our brotherhood today is over whether or not it's a sin to do virtual work. Mm -hmm. I had to meet with one of my own preaching brethren on that very thing mm -hmm. because we were in sin to shut down during COVID. And I looked him in the eye and I said, I tell you what, you're not my final judge. Mm -hmm. I said, I went back and forth. He told you did. I went back and forth with myself. And I talked with the elders about it. And I kept coming up with this idea that I would rather stand before God and he judged me about us not meeting for the good of the people in the building then for me to have to stand before God and some family member whose family member came because I said, you gotta be in the building and they died from it. I'd rather stand before God, not you or any other brother. And I meant that. There's just some things we don't we don't think far enough. They went to right. Hebrew chapter. I know what Hebrew chapter 10 said. I probably know it better than. <laughs> but it said, forsaking not the assembly. What was the context? Mm -hmm. In our churches that are doing virtual worship, are they forsaking the assembly or are they simply adapting to keep people safe until such time we can come back together again? None of them that I know of is planning never to come back together. Right. Exactly. Brother Megan, you know, first of all, forsaking means to walk walk away with no intention of ever coming back. Yes. It, it, because they, that that letter was written to the Hebrew Christians, and many of them had accepted Christ, but then they wanted to go back to their old way, and he and he and he warned them. That if you do walk away from this, I'm gonna let you know ain't no more sacrifices coming. Jesus was the last sacrifice. And, and the point that you made is 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 that exactly the idea was walking away with no intent of coming back. That's what that's what the second means. And 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 then he, he never read Hebrew. He was I mean, I, I mean uh Ezekiel. And, and the uh, third chapter of uh, the fourth chapter of, of Matthew, they, they never read that what Jesus said about tempting God. And in yeah. Hebrew, they talk about, I mean, nice, Hebrew, Ezekiel, the Lord said, He set uh, uh, a, a sword in the land, and the watchmen don't kept war the people. Right. And the people died, and blood is on him. Yeah. Blood is on him. See, that's our tax. So, what he is reminding us of, there are just some things that we make a test of fellowship that are not a test of fellowship. Mm -hmm. Like I said, those particular churches will not fellowship with us when we have kitchens in our church. Now, I don't have a problem with them. They're still my brothers, as far as I'm concerned. Just like the one cup of church, those are my brothers. If they obey the gospel, they hear, believe, repent, confess, and are baptized, they believe in the one church that Christ is the head of it, then they are my brothers. Now, and I will worship with them as long as I get the cup first. <laughs> Y'all looking at me strange. <laughs> but they will worship with us because we have multiple cups. There is something wrong, wrong with that. Yeah. You know, I always wonder about that one cup thing. Suppose I had the cup and I'm going to pass it to sister here, but before I pass it to her, I cough or sneeze into the cup. Was she going to still drink? Yeah, they're going to still drink because they're going to say you have to. As a matter of fact, we were pointing to me. <laughs> 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 
Brother Kevin did, yeah, it doesn't matter that somebody coughed into it. Brother Kevin said that he knew of a congregation where Shana, his friend, went to that was a one couple church and she was looking for a church home. And not only did they drink out of the one cup, but when the cup got back to the end, they took it and poured what was left in it back in the box. Oh. So they were going to use it the next time. Mm. Mm. I'm just simply saying we yeah. don't, we have to be careful that we do not bind on each other our personal preferences, idiosyncrasies, or opinions, even within a local church, honey, and then I got to move on. No, I was just going to say it on that. It's nasty. I'm just not going to say it. What did you say, Linda? I mean, just don't do that. I mean, even, do you? I could okay, find you. Okay, why did you do that? Pass around a cup. So you can have all kinds of bacteria. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You can have okay. on the other people. Who would want to do that to anyone else? <laughs> Again, when. Jesus took the cup and blessed it. He didn't bless the cup. He blessed the contents In, uh -huh. of the cup. Hello. Yes. And when he said, drink ye all of it, he meant drink ye all of the contents of the cup. He didn't say, how you drink ye all of it? Yeah. Now, of course, for them, it probably was only one cup, but you only had 12 of disciples and Jesus, and it was the Bible. But the issue is this. He's reminding us there's some things that are doubtful that we, we will destroy a church over. Yeah. Sister Kathy, I'm already past 8 o'clock, so I've got to rush home. It is amazingly easy to create a large divide over the smallest things. Christians have historically divided over matters of church buildings, use, oh. use worship styles, and appropriate worship dress. Divisions have occurred over choices of personal entertainment. It is all right to attend a sporting event. Is it all right? Is, I'm sorry. Is it all right to attend a sporting event? Can a Christian go to a movie? Is it right to use cookie cooking wine? The list goes on indefinitely. We do well to remember that we are saved by grace through faith, not by how well we keep our personal list of right and wrong, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. This does not mean that we have license to live as we please without regard to God's call for holiness. However, it does mean that we cannot use our personal proclivities and judgment for, for or against one another. We have become so good at judging one another that we metaphorically say, God, you don't have to get nothing, you don't have to judge nothing at the judgment. We got you covered. We got you. We're going to determine who gets into your heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to determine what sin is forgiven and what's. It's amazing to me that Jesus said there's only one sin that you cannot be forgiven of, and that's the sin of blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And we still have the audacity to come up with other sins that we think are worse than other sins, and that's the one that you can't be forgiven of. Oh, yeah, that's mine. Mine, mine, mine. Oh, 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 time frame. Yeah, Mr. McLean is right. Yeah. Judgment belongs to God. And ultimately, when all is said and done, he's the one who's going to say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Or he's the one who's going to say, Depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. Now, there are some things, now remember, he's talking about how God You know, there are some things he knows, you know, I don't care whether you're looking at it from the back of your head or the front of your head or the side of your head or looking at it out your feet, it doesn't matter. It's sin. Now, he's giving us some things that are point blank sin. But there are some things that 
I mean, their whole religions, as well as groups within the Church of Our Lord, that are basing what they believe about some aspect of life that's going to determine their whole religion. See, Muslims aren't the only ones who don't believe they eat pork. There are some, quote, Christian sects, unquote, who say it's a sin to eat pork. And you know why they say it's a sin to eat pork, right? Because when Jesus cast the demons out of the man whose name was Legion, mm -hmm. he cast the demons into the halls that were on the hillside. Right. And so because he cast the demons in the hall, that means we should never eat any pork. Mm -hmm. And whenever they say that to me, I say to them, yeah, but the hogs with the demon and ran into the water. Do you drink water? Yeah. Because <laughs> that's the logical conclusion of your premises if you're going to follow the principles of logic. Mm -hmm. So, chapter so, Timothy say, Do you hear anything? I know you may get to that. I know I, I have quoted that today. Paul said to Timothy, he said that everything that God created is good for eating as long as it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Yeah. So if you like it and it's not full of diseases, parasites, all that kind of stuff. Pray over it and then go ahead and enjoy it. So uh, it's in, let's see, Timothy. Oh, first of all, first and fourth chapter. I think it is fourth chapter. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, starting at verse number. Not as third. First Timothy 4, verse uh, 3 and 4. Three, four, and five. I'm sorry. As a matter of fact, First Timothy four puts it this way. Watch this. Starting at verse one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now watch what these seducing spirits are going to say. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Verse 3 forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing can be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and and word. Amen. I mean, that's the Bible. What is it? They'll put the brother in. In remembrance of these things, thou art a good, good minister. So we just have to be careful that we don't bind our personal preferences as doctrine. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we do well to what? Another critical uh, element of this instruction concerns the person viewed as weak in faith, Romans 14 1. If we could hear the original conversation, we would likely hear some Gentile converts making light of the convictions of their Jewish counterparts. Perhaps this included ridicule, scorn, or even a dismissive spirit. Paul describes these likely recipients of Gentile dismissal as weaker Christians, Romans 14.1. Their weakness was their tenacity in holding to traditions and practices that meant nothing in regard to their new standing in Christ. It their weakness was in regard to their conviction to hold on to their traditions and practice. See, sometimes the people we call strong are not the ones who are strong. Mm -hmm. They're actually the ones who are weak, mm -hmm. who will start arguments over these doubtful matters. 
Continue, Sister Kathy. It is ironic to see that the person we often consider as strong in the faith, described as weak in the faith, perhaps all of us have encountered Christians who consider particularly everything practically. Oh, I'm sorry, practically everything as a violation of the scriptures. Perhaps some of us have experienced the angst of having to sleep around to enjoy an activity that others in the church deem sinful. Our conscience can be troubled because this more faithful brother or sister condemns what we think to be a matter of personal preference. The reality is that those who make laws that the Lord has not made are not the strong ones. Did you all uh, see that? That's still in the book. Those who make laws that are not, that the Lord has not made are not the strong ones. You all take care. God bless. Thank you for being here. Rather, Rather, they are the ones in need of our loving, sensitive acceptance. We must take care not to use Paul's teaching as license. It can actually be helpful to have brothers and sisters whose tendency is to be extra scrupulous concerning our Christian practice. When a spirit of acceptance is ex exercised among Christians of either tendency, each can receive the benefit of being encouraged to live in the manner that glorifies the Lord. Moment 15. To seven. live in a manner that glorifies the Lord. Thank you, Sister Receive one another. The wisdom of God can and should be declared to the world through the church. The world needs to witness how God takes fallen people from all walks of life, brings them into a harmonious spiritual body, dwelling in love and acceptance. One of the things I want to encourage you as we get ready to close tonight is this. Let's become the people that we used to be in that we look for reasons to be in fellowship rather than looking for reasons not to be in fellowship. Amen. Harmonious spiritual body dwelling in love and acceptance. When we act in this way, we lift up Christ, he draws all men to himself. Failure to act in this way will only continue our slide of irrelevance in this divided and relationally torn, torn world. We really need to get back to receiving one another. Thank you for, for being here. Uh, especially those who got here when we were still in the dark and had any power and lights and you, you hung around till the lights came on. And we are just thankful to God for the presence of all of you. Brother Frank is going to come with the announcements and take any closing prayer requests. Uh, I do want to ask you to do me a favor. I am I am debating on a couple of things that I, I, I really think I need to do uh, to try to reach people who are not members of the Lord's Church. And, and one of them, I am prayerfully moving toward a decision to do a study on every New Testament passage of Scripture that deals with baptism. And I'm trying to decide whether I need to do that on a Wednesday during Wednesday class or to do it uh, on what was once Thursday, Thursday, and see if I can get some non members to come, and, or to do it just strictly via Zoom and put it up on our website and have people just join via Zoom. Uh, even if I, I still call it Thursday, Thursday, or do a hybrid where I'm here doing that study, but also they can connect the uh, so. Uh, so, okay. any suggestions you all might have? Yeah, yeah, I think she should try. Yeah, that's great. I think you, that's what you should do. Yeah, because I mean, you, you, if, if people are not coming out, they will, if they, if they really want to know, if they're real sincere, they will put up, they will go online. Okay, so 
I will, I will get with you. I just, I want to know, and it's, it's designed to really reach non members. And I, if I do it, whether it's just total or hybrid, can you do I want to know how many people are participating. I was like, can you, I was like, can you tell? I mean, will you be able to tell? I won't. If I do it here now, if I do it where I'm in front of the computer, then I'll know how many people so maybe are signed. You, okay, so you can sign. Okay. Yeah. Well, I could, I could open up my laptop, but then that's going to do. Anyway, I'm taking y'all suggestions. I'm thinking about them, and uh, as I think about this, and as I put this proposal together and share it with the elders, it's it's more an evangelistic tool. We we really need to. We're at a different age, and. Um, there's some things I, I just think maybe I'll have to do differently than I'm used to doing, but as long as I don't buy the scripture, I just want to reach folks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, honey. Going on tour at 12 noon class, one of the younger young ladies came and she said, the young people like it get this on, online. She said how much she enjoyed the class. Mm -hmm. I love to hear Brother McClain teach, but young folks, we want to just, we just want to do it online. And that's how you're going to get, that's, that's how you're going to get them. And, and then after they get more comfortable or whatever, they will, they will come. You think they, they'll come? I think they will eventually. They'll come. Okay. Um, I asked you all, and I'm going to take all of this under serious. So in order for me to ensure that I reach a maximum uh, audience, I want to reach an audience beyond us. Yeah, and yeah. I'm also going to have to do some advertising via Facebook and our website and give plenty of heads up time for them to know when mm -hmm. this, this class is going to start. That's what you got to do. You call? Uh, I just read a book called Dead, dipped, and delivered. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> dead, dead, and it's about that too. And it's where my beloved brother uh, took all the verses of the Bible, uh, all the verses in the Bible, in the New Testament, and to deal with the subject of baptism. And he went through them. Um, mostly the grammatical part, not so much the uh, theology, but a little of the theology. So I was thinking about calling the that dead, dipped, and delivered. But I, I want to check with him, you know, because he wrote a book. And, yeah, it's copyrighted. So I'm not sure yet. So that's. On the west side where I live, I they, um, I don't know how they got my address. I guess they walk around and give people addresses and they make mail. Letters and flyers and everything. And well, we get addresses. We're we're mailing seven hundred and something heart to heart, house to house, every month to an area over here at home. Oh, okay. And then we bring the balance here. But I'm thinking about changing that and sending selecting another area because we don't seem to be. Yeah. We've been doing this for a year. Oh, we so we don't seem to be getting. Area every, yeah, but. I didn't mean to take up all that time. I just wanted to let you all know that I am thinking and praying about ways we can, we can grow the Lord's church. But thank you for your question. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, yeah, that was what's very good. I think. Mm. Also, people are starting to get in. Oh, have they started moving back behind us? Yep. Oh, okay. Then I need to go over there and get permission and put a flyer over there if they started moving into this apartment right now. I can go back. I saw a few people today. Mm -hmm. I, they look nice on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, the announcements for today, condolences still to our uh, brother Dudley and family. 
and the loss of his brother. Have you guys had the memorial already? It'll, it'll be on the 27th, 27th of this month, yeah. Down in, in Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Oh, okay. it's in Jacksonville. Uh, I'm not familiar with that congregation. I don't know if, if they do virtual or, or anything. Let us know if you find out. Condolences to Kenyatta Wesley and the Stubbs family and also her mother, Sister Lizzie Stubbs, who passed away last month. Continue to pray for Kenyatta and her family. Continue prayer for the health of her brother McDuffie and family, Sister Sheree Warner, Sister Doris Smith, Sister Sheree Marshall, Sister Sharon Foster, and brother and sister McLean. Glad to have Sister McLean with us both this morning and this evening. Praise for Sister Mildred Brown, who's back at Marymount Hospital, Sister Margaret Martin, who's at University Hospital in Willoughby. That's Sister Pam Healy, who has surgery. Prayers for Sister Emma Brown's daughter, Brenda Elders, and Bonita Brown. Our food giveaway will be Tuesday, May 16th, from 10 a.m. to noon. Our third Saturday ladies class will be Saturday, May the 20th, at 10 o'clock. Please be sure to discard any paper or trash you have in the garbage. Thank you. Are there any prayer requests that we didn't hear already? Brother McClain. Uh, we need to pray for our son, Terrence McClain, Jr., TJ, and his wife, Danielle, in Michigan. Okay. Could you pray for uh, it's coming to the end of the school year and things are really getting crazy and the kids are like off the edge and the so we just pay for the school districts and the uh, staff and for my family. My granddaughter got a 19th got a and um I'm nervous. I'm going nervous and she mm -hmm. is afraid. So pray for all of our family in Michigan. Um, our family in, in Georgia. Grandson going to Michigan school there. Um, I'm sorry, what did I say? Oh, well, my, I'm sorry, in Missouri. My, my family in Georgia. Also, a lot going on with the shootings. So, family, I guess, Brother Barnes. Family all over the United yeah. States. Yes, thank you. Let us go to God. Heavenly Father, we bow before your throne of grace and mercy. On behalf of Brother Terrence McLean Jr., that you will bless him and what he's in need of. And we pray for the whole entire McLean family, her granddaughter, who had ranched out to her own apartment, that you will put your loving arms around her and protect her. And Father, we pray for family throughout the country that you will give them what they are in need of, wrap it up now to wrap around them. And Father, we pray for this congregation, we pray for our ancestors, Brother McClain. And we thank you for those who came out tonight to study and to, to sing your prayers. And Father, we pray that you will continue to bless our sick and shed in, that you will continue to bless Sister Martin, that you will allow her to recover from her health issues, the McDuffie family and the, and the kids, that you will continue to watch over them. And we ask God that you watch over us as we leave this place tonight and let us return to worship in spirit and in truth on Sunday. This is our prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.